G'day and welcome back for more Survival Impossible. Today is going to be a shorter episode. Unfortunately, my shifts didn't really work out for me this week, but I really wanted to make sure I got something out this week because of all those clang disasters that I was having last week. I would very much like to see that I can get a system working for the conveyor line to the new building before I come back next week. I've also got a big upgrade, whoops, <laughs> don't want to suffocate. I've also got a big upgrade planned for the crane vehicle. Thanks to Waper for pointing me to a script by Trekker Joe, I now have a means to fairly easily change the control setup of this crane so that it can use W, A, S, D, Q, E, space, and C to control movement of the pistons and the rotors at the end and base so that I can hopefully move the crane into position much more rapidly than I can with the manual controls that I've currently got set up. Now, I'm thinking I'll set up the crane first. One, because it's going to take me a bit of time and that might get us through a little bit closer to morning, so when I start playing around with building this stuff again, it might be a little bit lighter, maybe. Although I do have the spotlight, so it's not a total disaster if it doesn't take me forever. And two, because I would like to still try couple of extra methods of using the crane to build these posts. Now I know I could very easily just go up to that hinge up there and like this hinge on the ground go into the info and convert it to a station if it's completely static. Which it probably is. And if I convert it to station then I can just build straight off it into the ground. That's not that fun. I really want to be able to build with my crane. Uh, it just... I want to do it. It's silly, I know. But I really would like to rather than just using this method. But it is a method I will use if the crane method can't work. I think that we benefit to trying this out anyway because it kind of gives us some more insight into how everything works. So, to set up the crane to allow this whole thing to be done a little more easily. We need an extra programmable block on the crane truck. And I might stick this one on the back of the cockpit. The script that I'm going to use is called Piston and Rotor Keybinds. I will have a link to the script in the top of the video description so that you can find it there. Let's get this thing set up. Instructions for use. Create a group called Park. I'm actually not going to do that. I'm going to customize that name. And I'm going to call it Grabby Crane control because for want of a better name this crane is getting the name grabby for the time being so we'll copy that now what i need to do is create a group on this grid with all of the pistons that i need to control all the rotors i need to control and all of the and the remote control that's going to be used for controlling stuff so we've got our pistons which i wonder if i could control it from the cockpit no, I don't want to do that, actually. No. So we've got all our grabby rotors. Pistol, piston. I don't want these rotors because they're all inactive anyway. Piston and remote control. That'll be saved as grabby crane control. Now, this one. It's a typo in the name, so let's fix that. And because I know I've got some of these off, let's turn them all on. Because for the script's purposes, they need to be on. How close was I? Oh, I wasn't that close. I was a bit worried I might have knocked over a tree if I wasn't careful. Let's grab our programmable block and recompile. It'll now find that group. And it'll tell me that the remote control is still set to control things I don't want it to. So we'll turn off control thrusters and control wheels. Recompile and no errors. What the script's now done is put some information in the custom data box of all of the different pistons and rotors that we've got. I'm not going to fix these up yet. What I'm going to do instead, go back to my programmable block, edit its custom data, and create a second profile by putting the name of that profile on the next line down. Now we can recompile again. And if I go to this first piston and go to its custom data, you'll now see that there are two profiles. And what you can see here are the speeds that the piston will move in or the rotor will move in when you press a certain button. So forward, backward is W and S, left, right is A and D, etc. 
And for the main profile, for the arm distal piston, I don't think I want it to do anything. I think what I want it to do is, on the grabber bit, let's make it move forward. Actually, let's make that a bit slower. Forward and backwards. Okay. And then I'll set that up for each of the various pistons and rotors that are here. So for this piston, I'm going to set it up for roll. So it'll be 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5. Copy that because that's three pistons I need to set up that way. Alright, I've set them all up. I am going to recompile. Then going to add my remote control to my hotbar with a control option. Control it. Grab my programmable block, set up my two profiles. So that'll be run main and run. Oops, wrong block. And run grabber. Because that's the way, that's how I named the other one. Now, if I look out here, I should, in theory, have this controlled. Oh. Okay, that works. That's working. Bring. Oh. Jeez. <laughs> oh, rats. Done something silly. Uh, first off, I have turned my swivel rotor off. Let's turn it on, and now I can turn this around with A and B. My Q and E controls I have messed up badly. So left and right with the swivel rotor. Up and down with the initial hinge. What have I got forward and backwards? Nothing. Alright, forward and backwards should go the distal hinge piston. Yeah, there we go. Now I can control that independently and extend and retract those go left and right go up and go down all without having to mess with hotbar controls then if I switch to the other profile which is two I can then extend and retract that piston I can nope I think those rotors are all off <laughs> yes they are Let's turn them on. I can roll. I can go forward, back, roll, left, right, that way, that way, and like so. I may end up changing the orientation of all these controls and messing around with them a bit more, but I reckon, once I can get this camera back in position I want it in, I reckon this is going to save me a lot of time with picking stuff up. Uh, do I want to pick it up yet? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. And I think I want to pick it up on top, so that'll be this side over here. Let's see if I can manage to do this <laughs> with, the, with the crane controls. We'll go back to main. Turn around. Let's retract down and out a bit. Yeah, I did want to actually push that out a bit. Because then I can do this. Push it again. Spin round and then switch to my other controls. Should be that, yeah. Oh man. The controls are still going to be a bit complicated to remember because they don't line up perfectly with the equivalent first person controls for each thing. But they're pretty close. Or they're good enough. Oh no! Ah, see that's, that's potentially an issue though. Uh, I'm going to need to make that a bit slower. Grant. Oh. 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 This is not okay. <laughs> this is supposed to be easier. Oh. Ah. There. Um. I need a switch lock on this. No, not toggle on off. No! <sighs> I'm just kicking the thing around. It's not okay. Hey! Finally, I've locked it. Woo! Let's pick it up. Alright. 
Uh, I think it might take some getting used to, this new control setup, but I'll get there. So, what I would like to try first with this is... How many blocks up am I? Three. One. And then we'll put a merge block on. Wait, no. Two. Merge block up to the side is what will make my life easier. Hinge minus the hinge part. Alright, lift C lets get me up there so I can get rid of that hinge part. I could probably merge onto that hinge with this stuff, but I don't think that's worth doing. Right, back to crane and jigging. Let's try and get this into position so that I can start placing down the other blocks underneath it. The, the springing becomes even more obvious now that I can tap my controls more easily. The bouncing, I should say. Alright, hopefully that's the right position. Uh, well, it may not be, actually. I am getting the hang of this, slowly. I think even with the time it's going to take me to get accustomed to how this thing works and figure out better ways to have my controls set up. This is definitely a fast improvement. Might see if that'll attach to the hinge. Without exploding. Yep, good. And now for the first test of the theories as to how this, as to why this was exploding. So... We've got... Let's try and line this block up. Is that in the voxel? I think it is. Let's place some cheap blocks down with some interior walls. That's now a line of blocks having one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. We got plenty. Now that's placed down, I can detach this thing, which hopefully isn't going to explode when I do it. Attach that, good. Now that's not clanging out so badly. I can swing this out of the way as well, or should I leave it and test? No, let's, let's get this out of the way. No, leave it, test. Test? Test. Need to add the second merge block. Weld these two up. I just turn this off so I don't have to stand right next to it. Okay. Time to test. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight up there blocks. And we've got a whole lot more blocks down here. I think. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, so that is more blocks. And three. Two, one. <gasps> it didn't explode! <laughs> yes, it does work. And uh, attach. We are now linked. As it should be. So it seems like while I was playing, I forgot to actually describe what I was doing here. <laughs> so, editor splitsy to the rescue again. Basically, what's happening here is that we've got two grids. We've got the grid that the pole is part of, and then we've got the grid that's set in the ground. When you merge two grids together, the one with the higher block count is the dominant grid. If the grid with the higher block count is a mobile grid, and the other one is set in the ground, when they merge together, the one that's in the ground becomes a mobile grid. And as all of us know, when your mobile grid intersects with voxels, it explodes. <laughs> so, that's why things were going poorly last week. I had a single or two or three blocks in the ground, with six or seven in the tower. When they merged together, the ones in the ground became mobile and exploded. And now, what I can do is get rid of this merge block and the other merge block and all of the extra blocks. Which does waste a little Inventory bit more full. iron each time, but the cost of each of those interior wall blocks is actually really low, so it's not a big deal. This means I can pre-build my segments, lock them into the ground. Actually, I should grab a steel plate just to make sure I've properly locked into the ground. Over here. 
Ah, oh, yes. Rebuild everything and it should work now. I'm so happy! <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. This is the best. My crane works. My conveyor system works. I could probably even build these middle segments independently. <gasps> no, I messed this up. That should have been block higher, that hinge on the end. Oh. I need to get the lifts in there and grind off that hinge and build this up one higher. But it works. This is exactly what I was wanting to have happen. I can weld this thing up because who wants to leave these unwelded and at risk of getting annihilated? Not me. So there you have it. If you're merging to something that's in the ground, you must make sure that the thing that's in the ground, if you want it to stay there and not get blown up, has more blocks than the thing outside the ground. Makes me kind of wonder <laughs> how effective, assuming you could even get up against an enemy facility, how effective it would be to merge block to an enemy facility with your giant ship. Because then their entire base becomes a mobile grid. And the whole thing would disintegrate from all of the parts that are intersecting with voxels. Of course, it would be very difficult to get close enough that you could merge block to something, but still. Could be an interesting concept if there was ever an opportunity to test it and to take advantage of it. I was kind of expecting that to go poorly, so I hadn't really thought it'd be this quick to get this working. I might actually try and build more of this connection now. Ooh, I could set the script up on the Liftsy as well. So the Liftsy's got much simpler controls. Easily make it make sense, and then I just have to control it from the remote control. <laughs> Look at my arm. <laughs> oh man. I really hope they fix that soon, because that looks ridiculous. Get rid of this. And additional conveyor. I'm gonna have to figure out some way to hide the sides of these conveyors, because I don't like having the big yellow ports all over the place. But I do need these to be the full junction blocks just for attachment points. Uh, I'll probably end up covering them with catwalks of one variety or another. Oh, drat. I was thinking of doing the links on the ground as well. Yeah, I'm going to try to do the links on the ground. I'm going to see how much I can build this with the crane rather than building with the liftsy. What I'm going to do now is build up my conveyor line to go across the main kind of thoroughfare, I guess. So let's get the liftsy out of the way go and just be down here. For now. I'll get the crane out of the way. Okay. That took longer than it should have. And that is, I think, going to be just far enough away. So what I've done is I've set the crane up where I think I'll need it to be to lift this next conveyor section into place. And I'm going to build it down on the ground where it's easier for me to build. Oh, nuts. Of course that doesn't work. Um better way to make this work. Didn't think that part through. So I could build off that hinge, build the segment out, and then detach it and drop it to the ground using the crane, but uh, what else could I do? I do this. We go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Hinge part on this end, then I can grind off the other end, maybe? Oh, I've got a better way of doing this next time. Whoops. Next time, what I'll do is I'll place the first bit, pick it up with the crane, and then build off it on either side. Because then I'm... E then I've easily picked it up at the middle. Makes so much more sense. There we go. Now I'll just weld this thing up, and then hopefully the crane's strong enough to lift it. In fact, I should probably grab it first and make sure that it is before I weld all of that up. <laughs> The nice thing about this is then I don't have to use the liftsy and constantly move along because I'm not building much in each spot. The liftsy ends up being quite an inefficient way of doing things. And this should end up being a bit more of an efficient method. There we go, we're locked. And I can lift it. Cool. That's a lot of play at the other end though. I hope I'll be able to get it into place. Here we are, all welded up. Let's try and get it into position. All I gotta do is hook it up on this end. I don't mind what angle I hook it up at, as long as I can get it in 
line somehow. <laughs> okay, I'm not too far. I was expecting this to be a bit harder, but it's working out quite well. <sighs> this control scheme, it really does make a difference. I reckon that could be good. I'm gonna try. If I hop out of this, now I can't get build vision up there to control that hinge, but... What can I? Nope. Uh, but I should be able to find that hinge. Since it is connected up to the base. Here we go. Attached! Oh yeah! Yes! <laughs> it works! Lifted, completed section into place. Oh, this is going to be a much quicker way of welding. And if I can kind of master this building style, I should be able to do a whole lot of building in this met in this way. Oh, that's not the right thing to unlock. That would be really cool. Imagine lifting walls into, s into place and lifting other stuff. Oh, so many possibilities! I need to swing that a little round to its land. That'd be the easiest way to do that. Yeah, I reckon I want to bring it around to about where these holes in the ground are, since I probably don't want to be driving over them anyway. Put the pole almost straight across. I would build here. Shouldn't really be a problem for the poor cliff. For many. Yeah. That's a fair bit of ground clearance. Like, that's what? Almost 10 meters up? I don't think I'm going to be building too many vehicles that'll need to pass through here uh, that aren't small grid. Or I don't think I'm really probably going to be building any ground vehicles that aren't small grid, so the likelihood of me building something so tall that it doesn't fit under there is pretty small. Which means I can now build my tower piece and attach it to that hinge. If I am going... <laughs> One thing I must make sure I do before... I start planning more builds using this crane stuff in crane completed sections into place method. I must fix the hitch on this crane truck because it's a shocker. Ugh. That was tricky. Just didn't want to line up well enough for me to get that block in place. I'm going to need to bring the lifty over so that I can grab this hinge because I need to attach the segment before building the bit that's underneath. Alright, there's a lot of subgrids around here. This makes me nervous, but it seems like it's... Uh-oh, fine. Ah. Let me down, let me down, let me down! Come on, come on, come on, come on. That's much lower risk than it used to be, now that I've got everything easily accessible through these connectors. Alright. Now it is time to get this to merge to the ground. Once I... Oh, no. Uh, need to unlock the crane. Need to spin this around to the direction I want it to be in. Because I don't want it to be off at that weird angle. It's almost pointing down. Yeah, that's pointing pretty neatly down by the side of the uh, offload building. Ooh. This one could be a bit tricky to get lined up correctly. Oh, wait. I put one on there. Then I put one lined up as best I can. Yeah, that works. I'm adding a lot of steps <laughs> each time I do this. Cool, that can go there. Then we put our merge block down. Now all I gotta do is add a bunch of interior walls. Something like that should do the trick. That's 12 down there. 13, 14, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah. And then detach this hinge. Now I gotta lock the crane back onto this piece. Which means I can then detach it, weld up this merge block, and then merge it. It should all work. Hopefully, just like it did before. Oh, three, two, one. Merged. Nice. Oh. Looks like it took a bit of damage. And attached. Another segment complete. What I think I'm going to do now, before I do more of this conveyor line, is figure out how I'm going to do the conveyor system under here and where it's going to come out to a post. Because then I'll have the post at the far end, and I can kind of work to something... Ugh, maybe that's not a good idea. Oh, it should be okay. 
Then I can kind of work to something that'll join around here and have to futz around with that to get it to work properly, maybe? Ooh. No, that's a better idea. Ah! I know how to make this line up nicely. So, what I can do is if I start building the conveyor system here, build out to at least one post, but maybe I'll come up to a post here. Then, build a segment off that post, build a segment off the one that's in front of me right now, and where the two of them meet and can connect to a pole, I build that pole. Because with the two pieces moving, I'll be able to adjust position perfectly so that it lines up as neatly as the rest of these have, with as little twist and pull and push on these conveyor segments as I can possibly get. That should work out really nicely, actually. Yeah. Yes, yes, very nice. How many collectors did I put in here? Got 12. So, I think the best looking way to hook all of these up to each other would be to use conveyor junctions, probably in the... Dang it, which way is... The way, that way. Conveyor junctions in the middle, like so. And then corner pieces the rest of the way across. Which I'm going to have to build piece by piece because I can't get there. Whoa! Uh, oh, there was an unknown signal. I'm almost completely certain it was that that just exploded. Oh, if I got the modular building system worked out to a really efficient method, I could probably even push it to the limit of making like a conveyor line down to a nickel mine or something like that. I don't think I'll ever do that, but man. I could see that sort of thing being a relatively effective way to build stuff. You set up a printer, you project the same model over and over again, you build up a bunch of them, load them up on a truck, and just crane them into place and lock them down. You're done. You don't have to move the components where you need them, you just move the big segments of build. And in any game where you're playing without jetpack, that, I think, probably does save time. If you got a jetpack, it almost definitely does not, but with a jetpack it probably does. I've gotten lucky with the cargo ships so far today. Ooh, that actually reminds me of something. Next time I go up to space, I'm going to be facing Lucas's updated Reavers, which now use the rival AI stuff as well and have some additional behaviours, none of which I've read into and I am choosing not to, so that I can discover what happens in potentially the worst kind of way. Because I would love to discover those issues as I go along. And have I run out of iron again? I think I have. Rats. Uh... Oh. I think I've got some in the Goofy, actually. I didn't offload it all before I disconnected from the base the last time. Yes, I'm correct. I quite like this sort of setup where you've got the curved conveyors joining into the center. It looks it looks nicely industrial and kind of complex enough. Now I need to bring these tubes out. Probably let's come to here. And then it'll be conveyor junctions all the way up. With some steel with light armor blocks below. I'm going to need to bring the Lipsy down here, and this is going to be a very awkward slope to use it on. Lucky, it's got a landing gear. Here we go. One pylon placed. And I'm not going to be able to weld it up because I didn't bring the stuff. I'm a little bit torn. I'm pretty confident that using the convert to station and then build blocks into the ground method will work just fine. And I don't know if that method will be quicker or slower, so I'm going to try it out. What I've done is I've got the tower, I've then built a little bridge across so that I can build these conveyor tubes. And at the end of this, I will place my hinge. And then my conveyor junction. And then I'm going to climb up there and I'm going to convert that conveyor junction into a static grid. Although, oh no. I'm not going to do that immediately. What I'm going to do first is just so that it doesn't align perfectly to the grid that's here. I will build up this hinge and swing it out a little bit. Oh, I just realized something. Oops, didn't want to weld that up. Dang it! I have to get 
to go. <gasps> oh! I meant. Ah, oh, I did not meant to press space then. I can't believe I just jumped off there and survived. <laughs> anyway, uh, when I was placing this building down, it's not just like the horizontal alignment, the vertical alignment's different, so I'm going to have to do some sort of hinge system to adjust for vertical height as well on one of these segments. Dang. I cannot believe I survived that fall just before. <laughs> My luck knows no bounds, apparently. Alright. That's about where I wanted it. Then, control panel on it. Move back a bit. No! <laughs> ah! It is moving. Why is it moving? I share an urgent answer on that. Maybe do it on this one too. Still doesn't want to convert to station. It won't convert to station either. I guess that answers my question about how I'm going to go about doing this thing. Because I cannot do the convert to station method. Uh. My hinge is definitely not moving. This readout shows that it's not. If I wanted to really confirm that I can go to in go to my control panel and it is at absolute zero and it is not shifting. <sighs> Nuts. I really thought that method would work. I found before when I was trying to do this, I needed to get far enough away from the grid. Oh, in fact, what is the grid called? Let's see if I can do it remotely. Because technically, I've got remote access to this. Let's see. Nuts. I do not. Yeah, I can't see a way to make this work. I've got nowhere else to stand. I mean, I'd have to build an extra set of stairs to move somewhere differently. But I... It's definitely not giving me the option to convert to station. And I do have the option to convert to station on in this world. So it is something that would be available to me if that grid were perfectly still. Which for some reason, it is not. Uh, if you've got any ideas about other ways that I could try to see if I could make that into a station that don't involve me using a landing gear, because... I'd have to do a small grid conversion and then build down to a landing gear or spend a huge amount of steel on a large grid landing gear because they are super expensive. Uh, I'd be interested because I do want to try this method again in the future. Even though I am in love with the building method that I used for this segment. Unfortunately, that's all the time I have to record today, which means I'm going to have to try and find some time before the next episode to maybe weld up a few of these connections so that I can start next time off with a bit more of this work done. Maybe that'll even mean an intro time lapse. Could be nice for something different. So there's all that and plenty more to come and I will see you then.